All right. So uh, my name's Eddie. Uh, I serve the developer community at a company called DigitalOcean. Uh, I have a pretty cool startup uh, that I like to call Screaming Chicken Club. Uh, you can find it at your nearest uh, chicken restaurant, of course. Uh, and so I'm actually, like Priya said, I'm here to talk about how um, most uh, GitLab customers, customers today actually fall into this uh, workflow portability level of uh, multi-cloud adoption. And so, uh, like she said, I'm just going to jump in with a demo because that's the best way to show this kind of stuff. And so I've got a uh, GitLab project created for that website. And it's got, uh, it's nothing configured right now. Has anyone used uh, GitLab CI CD before? Yeah, oh, that's awesome. It is pretty great. Uh, anyone using Auto DevOps? Not as many, okay. Uh, so we're actually gonna take a look at Auto DevOps and uh, if you, you know, you may have thought that like it ties your hands a little bit or it's a little uh, constricted. It's actually not true at all and that's one of the cool things that I'm gonna show you today. So uh, we're just gonna get started. I have a, a cluster configured right now on uh, GKE, which is Google's Kubernetes engine. And so this is set up as a staging environment inside of my project here. And so we can actually take a peek at this. And so I've got a GKE cluster set up, and I also have a DigitalOcean Kubernetes cluster set up. And so what we could do is we could come over here and we could uh, add a, a cluster. Is anyone um, using like on-prem or some other solutions that aren't GKE for Kubernetes? Yeah, handful of folks, right? And so uh, what's really nice about this is you can import any cluster in here. Uh, you just have to create like a service account, cluster role binding, all this kind of jazz. If you've messed with Kubernetes before in GitLab, you've had to do this. Uh, I actually wound up writing a, uh, a cube control plugin to automate all of this for you. So you can grab this at gitlab.com slash eddiezane, cube control, GitLab bootstrap. Uh, and the TLDR is all you have to do is come in here and grab the project ID from your GitLab project. And so that's just right under here. And then you can pop into your terminal and wherever you have that uh, cluster set up, so I've got a, a cluster configured locally here. You can just rub cube control GitLab bootstrap. And then you paste in that uh, project ID and it's going to do all of the service account creation, all the API requesting, uh, generate us this URL that we can go to. Uh, and then we can actually follow up by installing the last bits that we need. So my cluster's already ingested. Uh, I'm gonna run through and install Helm and Tiller uh, and the Ingress Controller and Cert Manager. Anyone seen this screen before? Have you messed around with it not? If you haven't, it's pretty cool stuff. So this shouldn't take more than a minute. And then I just have to paste the URL in here uh, that GitLab is gonna use as my base domain. And so let's do that. So I've got this set up for production and my GKE cluster set up for staging. And we'll just install some ingress controllers and cert managers. Uh, this is going to, if you're not familiar, uh, let me generate TLS certs automatically. It'll hand up all of my routing with an Nginx ingress controller. Uh, and it's pretty much just gonna handle all of my CI CD deploys from start to end. Uh, there's basically zero configuration. And so while this is spinning up, we just gotta wait till it gets an IP address. So let's see if it spins one out real quick. It's gotta create a load balancer. Shouldn't take more than a minute. Uh, and while that's going, we can, uh, we can start writing our GitLab CI uh, manifest file. So if you've seen this before, it's a GitLab CI.yaml. And it's just like, you know, very straightforward, this configuration language. We always start with some sort of stages. Uh, and so these are the stages that uh, are required for auto DevOps to run. Um, the nice thing about Auto DevOps and, and GitLab in general is that all of GitLab is open source, including all the Auto DevOps templates. And so nothing at the end of the day is magic here, and that's what I really appreciate. And so this is actually the manifest for Auto DevOps, where if you just click that box that says Enable Auto DevOps on your project, uh, this is the manifest that it's going to use. And it actually has all of these separate jobs and templates broken out here. And the nice part about that is you can actually go in and inspect every step, and they're all composable, so you can pull in the different ones that you care about. And so let's take a look on our load balancer. Shouldn't take but a minute. Something went wrong, let's try again. <laughs> and while that's going, I'll finish this out. Uh, and so what we can actually do is uh, we can add a variable here uh, that says staging enabled. And so what this is gonna let us do is do a multi-environment deploy, right? And so this is where workflow portability really comes in. Uh, and so GitLab has different concepts of staging, uh, different concepts of environments. 
And we can actually uh, target our cluster based on the environment. So we can tag different build jobs with an environment and deploy to different clusters. And it really gives you this whole multi-cloud approach to deploying to Kubernetes. And so real quick, we just have to include those templates that I mentioned before. So we're just going to grab the, the build.gitlabci.yaml, and then we'll grab the deploy job. And so that's it. This is actually all I need to get started with a uh, full auto DevOps pipeline. Uh, we're skipping a couple of the steps here, like cluster scanning and some uh, uh, security scanning. Uh, great features. They just take a little longer to run. And so I'm going to start that off. And let's just make sure. There we go. We got an IP this time. Make sure this is configured. Do, do, do. One of the secret features of this website is if you click the chicken's head. It makes a pretty great sound. So we just got to wait for this IP address. We kick that off. There we go. So I'm going to set DNS up real quick to point at that. Save that. Awesome. So I'm going to push this up. We'll make a commit. DevOps. Right? And so just like that, all I did was add that very simple manifest file. Uh, you could skip all of that by just enabling full auto DevOps. And so this is going to kick off a CI CD build pipeline. And we'll see here that the first step it's going to do is it's going to do that build. So it's going to pull down uh, my Docker file. I've got a Docker file on that. Go it's basically just a very simple Go project with a static website in there. So it's going to do a build on that website. It's going to pull down. GitLab's going to inject all of the uh, environment variables needed to log into the registry. So if you didn't know, your GitLab projects actually have a built-in uh, registry for containers. So you can store all of your containers right in your GitLab project. Works across all the clouds. You can use the Kubernetes secret to easily generate it. And so this shouldn't take more than a sec. Uh, and while that's going, I'll show you this awesome part where we have the environment section. And so this is going to break down of those different environments that I mentioned. Uh, and so the nifty thing is by enabling that staging environment, the template gives us a manual deploy to the production. Right? So it'll generate us a URL that we can go check out on staging on that GKE cluster, uh, make sure the website looks exactly like we want, and then push it to production by approving it, and it'll ship off to the other cluster. So the job succeeded here. We can look at the staging deploy. So it's going to take that container it just built, plug it in. Uh, it's using Helm under the, the hoods, right? So Helm is also very um, native when it comes to different clusters. Um, and that's where it gets really tricky with Kubernetes is as you start using more advanced features, uh, you have to start adding more annotations, right? That's this thing that we've adopted with in terms of like really tweaking those generic abstractions we've created. Uh, if you're using like an AWS load balancer, you have to throw a ton of annotations at it. Um, GKE has a couple, DigitalOcean's got a couple to like, you can pick like an SSL cert to automatically apply. So we're still a little ways off from having like really truly cloud native um, uh, like Kubernetes orchestration when it comes to load balancers. That's one of the nice things that Crossplane's introducing. And so boom, we deployed to staging. I can grab this URL right here. And we can see that our website, uh, it's automatically generated the, uh, the, the URL name. It's just my GitLab project with staging tacked onto it. And so this is running on GKE. This looks good to me. I can pop back over to that environment section, and I can actually go on and improve that to deploy to production manually. And so hopefully the wheels are turning. Hopefully you're seeing how you can apply these different things, right? If you have your own on-prem cluster, all you have to do is plug in those different uh, credentials. You could use that plugin I wrote to automatically add them in. And it really alleviates the pain of having to start and do this all manually, right? Eventually you might need some more manual and like really fine retuned things. Uh, but to get started and to start deploying with CI/CD, this is super straightforward. And so let's peek on that job. It should be done in a second. And so this is going to do the same thing. It's going to generate us a URL. All of that is customizable. You can plug in variables and environment variables to tweak the ingress name that gets created. And like I said, the nice thing is it's using Helm under the hood, so nothing is magic there, right? They're just manifests that you can take a look at, check out, and modify yourself. Uh, and that's it. So our production deployment's been done, generated at that production URL I added. And we have a full deploy, right? So start to finish. Uh, probably around like five, six minutes to get this running. Uh, anyone have any questions on that?
Awesome. Well, hopefully you go give Auto DevOps a shot if you haven't done it before. Uh, you can find me on the internet at Eddie Zane, uh, which is one of these tabs here. There it is. Uh, and I'll be here all at KubeCon. So uh, thanks for having me. This was great. Thanks. <laughs>